Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. Now we've been studying faith and what faith is. And today I want to continue what we started yesterday. We were making a comparison between faith and hope. Hope is not faith. Faith is not hope. What is hope? Hope, by definition, in the Bible, it's different than what we use, the way we use the word hope in our vernacular. As many times when you say to someone, are you going to be able to go on vacation or are you going to get that new pr- promotion at work? And somebody will say, well, I hope so. Or are you going to, you ask them, do you think you'll get this thing for Christmas? And they say, oh, I hope so. In our ver- vernacular, the word hope simply means desire, want. I want it to happen. I desire it to happen. I wish it would, but I don't know. And so in our vernacular, hope simply is a desire expressed with uncertainty, not knowing for sure if it would happen, but would want it to happen, would like it to happen. But that is not what the Bible means when the Bible uses the word hope. The Bible hope means confident expectation. You're expecting something confidently. It also means happy or joyful anticipation. It means a strained expectancy, expectancy. And I like this definition, watching with outstretched neck. So you're watching and looking for something that you are confidently expecting to come. And you're looking with an outstretched neck. You're looking around every corner. You're expecting it so strongly that you are anticipating it and you're looking for it. That is Bible hope. It is a confident expectation. Another definition of Bible hope or description, I should say, of Bible hope is the vision, the picture, the image on the inside of you of what you are expecting, what you are expecting. So it's not just confident expectation. It's picturing and seeing in your heart the thing you are expecting. You are envisioning in your heart the thing you are expecting. So it's having an image on the inside, a picture on the inside of you in your heart for what you are believing for. Another word for that is the blueprint. It's the blueprint, the drawing, the picture, the image of what you expect to come to pass. Now, just like a builder has to have a blueprint before he can build, it, whether he's building a house or, a, or um, an office building, a hospital or a skyscraper, before he starts to build, He's got to have the blueprint. Otherwise, when he builds, it will just be all chaotic and there would be no sequence or coherence to what he's doing. So he's got to have the blueprint, the picture that he will follow. In a way, it's like it's the map. It's the picture of what he will build. Now, that is exactly how faith and hope work together. You see, hope is the blueprint. Hope is the vision and the picture that you see in your heart for what you are believing God for. Faith is the power to create. We were talking about what faith is. And one of those definitions is faith is a spiritual force Force is a power to create things, power to change and to create. So faith is the power of God to create and change things in your life. Another way to say it, faith 
builds what hope envisions. Hope is the vision, the picture, the blueprint. Faith goes to work. It's your faith that works, your faith that builds, your faith that creates, your faith that releases God's power into your life and situations to begin building and creating the vision that you have in your heart. So if you don't have a vision or a hope, then there is nothing for your faith to build. There is nothing for your faith to work on, to create. And as we looked at it yesterday, in Proverbs 29, 18, it says where there is no vision, the people perish. Well, vision is also a description of hope. So you could say where there is no hope, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. If you don't see anything good for your future, then there is nothing for your faith to build and to create in your life. So you've got to start with building the picture on the inside of you. You've got to start with building the picture on the inside of you. And so hope must come. And how does hope come? Hope comes from the word of God. Hope comes from the promises. So whether it's for your healing, you've got to see yourself healed. You've got to see yourself out of bed. You've got to see yourself walking. You've got to see yourself doing what you couldn't do before. Whether it's for your family to be restored. Maybe your children are estranged from you. You haven't heard from them in a long time. You've got to see them sitting around your table, laughing and talking and having sweet fellowship with you. You've got to see them coming home, hugging you, saying to you, I love you. Whether it's for your finances, you've got to see yourself debt free. You've got to see your bills paid. You've got to see your mortgage paid in full, your car loan paid in full. You've got to see a pay raise. You've got to see in your heart, your paycheck coming with an extra zero at the end or a couple extra zeros. You've got to see yourself walking in the thing that you are desiring to do. As I gave example for myself, I knew from the time I was a child, I was called to be a missionary. And as I grew up, as I made friends, every person I would ever make friends with within a short time, I mean, maybe minutes or hours at least, if I'm making building a relationship with them, I was talking about being a missionary all the way through my childhood and youth and young adulthood. I was talking about, I'm going to be a missionary. I'm going to the mission field. I'm going to the mission field, even on a job that I had interviewed for. I was in a job interview to get it here in the U S and in the interview, it was a Christian ministry. And I said, I'm not going to be here very long. I'm going to the mission field. Well, they were kind enough to hire me anyway, in spite of that. But I was so expecting to go to the mission field any moment. And as I would sit in my chair, I would daydream of walking across the nations. I could see myself putting one foot down on one nation and another foot down on another nation. I was dreaming of all the nations of the world. Well, after some years of believing, using my faith to build the vision. That was the vision. But then applying faith to build that vision, the vision came to pass. And there came the day that I was actually literally walking across the nations, going nation to nation to nation. My vision became a reality. And And that's the way it has to be in every area of our lives. No matter what it is that you're believing God for, you need to see the vision on the inside of you. You need to have a picture of what you are believing for. 
If you don't have a vision, a picture, then there's nothing for your faith to build. There's nothing for faith to create. Faith is the power of God to create. But what will it create if you don't have a picture? The vision is on the inside of you. How do you get the vision on the inside of you? You study and meditate in the word of God. The promises of God are your paint is the paintbrush, the picture, whatever it is you need. You get those promises for your healing, for your finances, for your children, your marriage, your job, whatever it is. In Romans ten seventeen, it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, I want to say also hope comes by the word of God. In Joshua 1, 8, Joshua 1, 8, it says meditate in the word day and night. It says actually do not let this book of the law, that's the word of God, depart from your mouth, but meditate in it day and night that you may be careful to do everything in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. You know, the whole world is looking for keys to success. The libraries are full of books written about keys to success. Well, I've got it for you right here in one scripture, Joshua one eight. This is God's key to success. Do not let the book of the law, that is the word of God, depart from your mouth. We've been talking about speaking, confessing the words of God, the promises. Do not let the word of God depart from your mouth, but meditate in it. What is meditation? Meditation is imagining God's word being a reality. That's what it is. It is imagining God's word being a reality in your life, seeing yourself walking in what it promises that you can have. If if you're believing God for a new house, you've got to see yourself sitting in your in your in the living room of your new house. If you're believing God for a bigger home, you've got to get a picture on the inside of you. Maybe even a picture. This is something else to do is literally get a picture, a physical photograph. If you're believing for a house, get a photograph of the house. If you're believing for a car, as we're going to talk about this later, get a specific picture of a car. If you want a Honda, if you want an Acura, if you want a Toyota or a Mercedes, whatever, get a picture, get a picture, get it, <laughs> get a picture, put it in front of your eyes eyes. Keep it in front of your eyes. See it, see it, see it. And I even mentioned, yeah, get the picture of the car, the house you want. You've got to see yourself sitting behind the steering wheel of that car that you want. See yourself sitting in this behind the steering wheel in the driver's seat of the car that you want. If you're believing for a house, a bigger house, see yourself sitting in your living room sitting in your family room or your bedroom or your kitchen in that new bigger house. See yourself in it. Picture yourself walking in it. You know, I used to, with my family, um, go through the parade of homes and these were big homes. Why? I was building a picture in my heart and I'm still believing God for that one. But it's a tool for getting a visual image. You need a visual image, seeing yourself in it. Hallelujah. And I mentioned this yesterday. If you are wanting to lose weight, you need one of the biggest things that you need to do is to start seeing yourself. And this is hard. I know when all you do when you look in the mirror is see someone fat or what you think is fat. Even a lot of times you see yourself differently than what everybody else sees. But you have to see yourself. You've got to picture and develop the image in your heart, seeing yourself slim, slender or whatever weight you desire to be at. You've got to pic picture that you've got to change your image of yourself before you can ever be anything different. 
You have to change the picture of yourself before you can be anything different. How do you do it? In the word of God. Meditate in the word. Find the promises. Meditate. Imagine. Dream. God is looking for dreamers. I started saying this yesterday. God is looking for dreamers. Why? Because those who don't dream don't do anything. Those who don't dream don't accomplish anything. Those who don't dream don't build anything. God needs dreamers because he's got work to be done. He's got plans to be fulfilled. He wants to use you. You know, the world often will tell you, doctors will tell you, the bankers will tell you, the mortgage um, lenders will tell you, don't get your hopes up. Don't get your hopes up. We just don't want you to get your hopes up because we don't want you to be disappointed. You see, they have a fear of disappointment. And so they say, don't get your hopes up, but that's not what the Bible teaches. You see, you have to get your hopes up because you've got to see something bigger. You've got to see something better than where you are today in order to bring your life up to a higher level, to a better place. If you don't see yourself in a better place, you will never reach a better place. But you see, they don't want you to be disappointed because they have no power. Remember, we were talking about the world system is powerless They have no power to create things. They have no power to change things. So this is the way it is. I'm sorry. We can do nothing about it. They're hopeless and helpless. So they say, don't get your hopes up. Well, that's not your position in the kingdom of God and in the body of Christ, because we need to get our hopes up because we do have the power to change things. We have faith. Faith creates things. Faith creates things. Faith can create whatever it is that you are desiring and dreaming. There is no impossibility in God. With God, all things are possible and all things are possible to who? To those who believe. If you believe there's nothing impossible for you. So don't be afraid to get your hopes up. Don't be like the world. They say, don't get your hopes up. Why? Because they're powerless. They can't do anything. You don't be like them. You do get your hopes up because you've got the power. You've got the power to create the dream and the vision. It is faith in God's word. Of course, it's not your power. It's God's power. But you are activating the spiritual law of the kingdom of God, the law of faith, as well as the other spiritual laws. You're activating the spiritual laws of the kingdom of God with which nothing is impossible for you. All things are possible. You can do anything when you put your eyes in the word of God. I want to remind you of Proverbs Chapter four, where it says in Proverbs four, verses 20 and 21, my son, attend to my words. Now, what does attend mean? Well, if you're meeting someone and and they say, hey, uh, can you have lunch with me today? You say, I'm sorry, I cannot because I have some business to attend to. Attend means something that you've got to do. And you've got to be diligent to do it. Something that is a priority that takes diligence and you've got to attend to it. You've got to get it done. So he said in Proverbs 4, 20, my son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. So put your pay attention to his word. Verse 21 Let them not depart from your eyes, from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. My words in your heart and in your eyes, God's word in your heart and in your eyes. So what do you do? Get a picture. If you can, if it's a physical object, a house or a car or a dress, Cut out a photo of it, put it on your mirror, put it on your refrigerator, your microwave door, places where you're going to go, look, 
throughout the day. See it before you continually. Keep it in your heart. And then 23, Proverbs 4.23, keep your heart with all diligent diligence. For out of it are the issues of life or the forces of life. That is the creative force of life comes out of your heart. You have to see God's promises as a reality. You have to see it inside of you by meditating on what God has said. And some of the things that God says to you is not just a promise of a material thing in your in the word or thing for, for healing or family but it can be something God has spoken to you as a, a rhema word a prophetic word for your life God said I've called you to do this you will do this you will be this then you've got to develop that picture that image on the inside of you so here I want to get into another thing that I want to say about what faith is we're we're comparing and describing what faith is. Faith is seeing the answer in your heart before you see it with your eyes. Now, hope is the picture, but faith sees it as a reality right now. And this is another thing. Hope is a vision which makes it a future thing. Hope is expecting confidently something to come and happen in the future. Faith is what brings it from the future into the now, into the present. And if you remember, we talked about the kingdom of God a few weeks ago, and we said the kingdom of God is timeless. It is the eternal now, everything in the, in God's kingdom is now. So you have to see it in your heart as though it is now. Hope is vision. This is what I expect. It's the picture that I'm dreaming of. I can see it happening someday. But then faith is what brings it from a future thing into a present I believe I have it. I believe I have it. I believe it's mine. I believe I am healed. I am healed. I believe I'm healed. I believe I am debt free. I believe my children are sitting with me at home. So faith sees yourself walking in the manifestation, the reality of what you are believing God for. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, this is powerful. Get this verse, 2 Corinthians 4, 18, all right? 2 Corinthians 4, 18 says, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Let me say that again. We fix our eyes not on on what is seen, but on what is unseen for what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. We talked about that before the temporary things are subject to change. The eternal will never change. And I just want to close this broadcast with this question. What are you seeing? What do you see? Are you seeing with your physical eyes more than you see with your the eyes of your heart, your spirit. If you're seeing with your physical eyes, you're seeing the natural circumstances the way they are. But if you see with your heart, you see the vision of the promises of God for your life. What are you seeing? Develop God's image for your life in your heart and then get to work using your faith. Let your faith Build and create what you are seeing and visioning in your heart. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Now, remember tonight, tonight is our Victorious Faith Seminar. Please come. I want to meet you. I want to shake your hands. I want to get to know you. I so much want to get to know you. 
And so our Victoria's Faith Seminar is tonight at 7 o'clock, 7 p.m., but we will have pre-service prayer from 6.15 to 6.45 for 30 minutes before the service, 6.15 to 6.45, and then service will start at 7 o'clock. Where will it be? We are meeting at the Comfort Suites in the Denver Tech Center. That is at I-25 in Dry Creek. It's one block east of I-25, one block north of Dry Creek Road on South Clinton Street. So the address is 7374 South Clinton Street. And if when you go east on Dry Creek, one block at the first signal, you turn left at the first signal, and that is Clinton. And um, you can go to my website, www.victoriousfaith.co, or you can write to me, info, I-N-F-O, at victoriousfaith.co, victorious, V-I-C-T-O-R-I-O-U-S, that's victoriousfaith, F-A-I-T-H, dot C-O. Also, I want to invite you, if you don't partner with any ministry or church, you should take your part in the body of Christ to build the kingdom of God. And I invite you, join us, partner with us in this ministry as we are preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God in this nation and around the world. Yes, even my CDs are still going to other nations. And so join us, partner with us as we preach this gospel of the kingdom in all the world because Jesus said, then the end will come. So I just want to remind you, come out and see me tonight at 7 p.m. at Comfort Suites. And remember, God loves you. You are blessed and highly favored by the Lord.